Hey my friends, how are you doing? I know this is a little bit strange, I'm a pixel guy, I'm in the forest, but I guarantee I have some pretty cool stuff for you that you should check out in this video. It is weekend, but hey, let's play around with some cool new tools that you should know and this is one of the tools. Also, look over here, look over there, nothing to see, look at me, let's get started. I'm a real boy again and I'm here to tell you not to get Photoshop. What I mean by that is that a lot of people are very confused about the different subscription models. So I want to tell you what you're actually getting and what you should really avoid. Here are the different bundles you have and you can see here you have Photoshop for $21 a month. That is a lot of money. And then down here you have Lightroom with one terabyte of online storage. That's $10. That is already a lot better. But what this is, is just Lightroom Cloud. Lightroom Cloud is not even close as powerful as Lightroom Classic. So what you should really look at is the photography bundle up here. And this is very confusing. It is super hard on the Adobe page to actually figure out what you get with this subscription. They also have a 20 gigabyte subscription that is cheaper than that. It's only cost $12 per month. I don't see that on this page. Here we have a comparison between the photography bundle one terabyte and the Lightroom bundle one terabyte. And you can see you only get Lightroom, but not Lightroom Classic. And Lightroom Classic sounds like it does less, but actually it is much, much more powerful. But the important thing here is when you have the photography bundle, you get Lightroom Cloud, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop Desktop, Photoshop iPod, Lightroom Mobile, the Adobe portfolio, which is basically a free website that you can use and set up and fill with your own pictures. And then you also get cloud storage. Now the confusing part here is you get actually more, but they don't show you in this page. But when you go over here, they actually give you a little bit more information because you also get Adobe fonts. So that means you have a big library of fonts that you can use for free for yourself, for your projects, for your clients. So this is really good. Also, you can use the website Behance, which is free, but you need an Adobe account and it's still cool to have that. And you have the creative cloud libraries. I will tell you in a second what that is. But still, this is not everything you're getting. Because when I look at this page, you can see I have the photography plan with 20 gigabyte and it says your plan includes 24 apps and services, but you can't find anywhere what that is. Even if we go into the Creative Cloud desktop app, this is where you install all of your programs and they also automatically update. So this is very useful. It doesn't really tell you everything you get. In addition to all I have showed you so far, you also get Adobe Bridge. By the way, Adobe Bridge is free to use without a subscription, but you still need an Adobe account. This is one of the best media libraries you can get and it can handle any kind of format, video, audio, photo, PDF, 3D files, all kinds of stuff can be handled by Adobe Bridge across multiple software tools. So that is pretty amazing. Now down here, you can see that you also get Premiere Rush, which is a watered down version of Premiere, but still you can use it to easily cut videos and Photoshop Express, which is kind of a desktop version of their app. Not really useful, especially if you already have Photoshop, but for quick edits, it might be a tool you want to use. When you go over to mobile, there is a lot more stuff to look into that you can use on your smartphone. So you can see even Illustrator is here as an app that you can use on your phone. So this is pretty interesting to have. You have Adobe Express, also something that you can use on your mobile and on the web. I will show you in a second. You will be mind blown by that. One thing that's pretty cool here also is Capture. Capture is one of the most powerful creative apps that you can also use for free and you absolutely need to check that out. Because what this app can do is 
you can photograph anything you see out there and it will scan the colors and create a color profile for you. It will also scan fonts and tell you in the Adobe font library which of these fonts are most similar to that font. And as you can see, you can also create designs and other cool things, all of that in that app. That is absolutely powerful. This is also where we come to the creative libraries and how to use them. Let's go back here for a second and you can see when I go here to files, I have these collections here. Now when I click on that, you can see I have here different images that I have created with the capture app. These are vector images, by the way, so it can convert a photo into a vector file, but also what it can do is it can create colors here from photos that you have taken. So if you see a cool poster, you like the photo, you like the colors in there, you take a snapshot and it will tell you the colors. And these colors can be used directly in the Adobe apps like Photoshop and Illustrator to start designing right away. The amazing thing with Capture on top of this is that you can create brushes that you can use in Photoshop from things you see in your everyday life. This app is absolutely powerful. As you can see, there's a lot more apps to explore here. You have an app for Lightroom and you have a photo fix app and you have a camera app. So, so there's a lot of stuff to play around with. But we are actually not finished yet because we also have the web tab. In here we have Adobe Express and you have probably never heard about that. It is a competition to Canva. So when we go on the website, you can choose here from a lot of presets. There are premium presets, of course, but you also have animated presets, Instagram stories, Instagram posts, logos, Facebook posts, flyers, all these kind of things that you can choose from. And when we click on one of these, this is opening up and you can start editing the layers here. You can also see the layers and rearrange them or delete them. And as you can see, I can freely move the text. I can change the font to something else. And there's a lot more tools in here. And when you're finished, you can simply download it or share it directly. Now I also said there is a web version of Photoshop and you also might never have heard about that. And you can see when you're in the app that this is actually a beta and has some errors here. You have a lot of functionality, different brushes, you have different layers, you can use different adjustments in here. And it also has the smart filters like down here with select subject. You can see that this works beautifully. And now I will down here invert my selection and I will create an adjustment layer for hue and saturation. Now let's see if this works and wow, this is amazing. Look at that. I just changed the background in my website without using Photoshop on my computer. That is pretty amazing. Now here is something we haven't even talked about yet. When you have Photoshop, you also have Camera Raw. And Camera Raw is not just for raw photos, it's also for JPEGs and it is as powerful as Lightroom Classic and it also has the smart filters. When you go up here to masking, you can see again we have select subject. I created a mask for the bunny, but here I have a lot more control over that. So I can again invert the mask. So now I have the outside, but I can also combine this if I want to. You can see here subtract. I can combine this with another mask. Let's make here a linear gradient. I draw this out. Now only the lower left part of my image is selected. Again, when I go to the hue adjustment, now I can adjust this part of the image in pink and the rest stays the same. Now, if I want to, I can duplicate the mask here. And in the second mask, I can invert the gradient and I can turn this into a different color. So suddenly you have a background that is going from pink to blue. And then of course you have all the other adjustments that you also find in Lightroom Classic. So this is extremely powerful. Also in Adobe Photoshop, we have the neural filters. One of the very useful tools you will find in here is called Super Zoom. The naming is a little bit confusing, but what it does is upscale your images. So over here where it says Zoom Image, you click 
and this defines how much you want to upscale. So in this case, four times, you can enhance the image details, you can remove JPEG artifacts, noise removal, and you can even sharpen that. Let's click on OK. And now we have a very high resolution version of our bunny with sharpened details that looks really, really beautiful. Another neural filter you want to check out for your AI artist called the Depth Blur. This AI filter understands the depth in the image. So you can see that I can now reduce the focal range. So only this part is sharp, the foreground is blurred and the background. But if I want to, I can click in the background to have this sharp and the foreground blurred. So this can be extremely powerful for your AI art and your photos. And also when you want to create the cool animation you've seen me do at the beginning, this is also included. You can choose from all of these characters and a lot of backgrounds. This will animate the mouth and the body depending on your head movement, not the hands though, but you have animation triggers that are very easy to position. There's a pro version with lots more features that you could use to animate your AI art and create movies with that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a tutorial on how to use that. So overall, the Adobe Photography Bundle has a lot more to offer than the website actually shows you. Leave a like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye! Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah, I wish you a good weekend.